Welcome to the lecture of steam accessories under the head of uh, 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 chemical process utilities. Now, we have covered previously about that how we are generating the steam, different aspects of boilers, uh, different aspects of other access mountings, accessories, etc. related to the boiler. We discussed about the temperatures, steam drums, part of steam drums. Uh, in the previous lecture, we were discussing about the feed water. Um, quality feed water supply of the boiler. Now, in this uh, uh, particular chapter, we will discuss the remaining part of this uh, feed water supply or feed water quality or the importance of feed water to the boiler. We will discuss about the steam traps, uh, especially with respect to the uh, different types attributed to the thermodynamic steam trap, mechanical thermostatic steam traps. Um, see, uh, the steam traps, they are being used to release the condensate from the pipe work while preventing the steam from escaping to the system. Now, steam trap uh, condensate, usually when the condensate is formed, uh, steam give up its enthalpy of evaporation that is called the latent heat. Now, the proper removal of condensate from the steam plant of all type is vital. Now, if we need to work the plant efficiently and uh, this operation is commonly performed uh, by the steam trap. Uh, frequent causes of unsatisfactory condensate drainage, this include the choice of wrong type of steam trap uh, for the application, the use of steam trap steam trap that is incorrectly size of the load and pressure condition and the bad installation. So, we had discussed uh, a lot about uh, the steam traps then question arises what is a steam trap. So, a steam trap is an automatic valve capable of distinguishing between the condensate and the live stream. So, the separation is uh, extremely essential. So, the difference between uh, the condensate and steam is usually sensed in several way. One way suggests that uh, the stream trap detects the difference with respect to the density. Another says that uh, uh, they react to the difference with respect to the temperature and third is relying upon the difference on the flow characteristics. Now, what must a steam trap do? This is again a very vital question. The steam trap must remove condensate, air, any kind of CO2 in trapped from the system as quickly as it collects. There should be not, I mean, you can say theoretically should not be any retention time. So, a steam trap must also minimize the steam loss, that is again very important. It must be corrosion resistance, it must impart uh, carbon dioxide venting, it must impart the freedom from dirt problems. Now, all these things are essential for the long life uh, and dependable service uh, of uh, boiler, steam piping network, etcetera. Apart from this, uh, the steam trap must also provides air venting. It must provide operation against the back pressure. Now, usually back pressure may occur because uh, when the condensate forms, there may be slight change in the pressure. So, the back pressure may occur. Now, question is again, what makes up a steam trap? Usually, a steam trap has an orifice. You can see over here. An orifice alone is not an steam trap. If flow changes, orifice is not correct. If pressure drop uh, changes, orifice is not correct. If the orifice must change size as conditions changes, that is the thing. Now, here you can see the inlet connection, a body and the outlet connection, all these are some of the rough diagram of uh, a steam trap. Now, a steam trap should have a valve. A valve may be fully opened or fully closed or modulated to vary the size of uh, the orifice as per the condition changes. Now, here you see that this is the valve and it changes as uh, the as per the prevailing conditions. 
Now, a steam trap should have an operator. Now, this operator usually this senses when to move the valve and supplies the power to move the valve. Now, traps are different in type of valve and types of operator they use. Let us talk about uh, the different type of a traps operator. Uh, now, usually when we discuss about the steam traps, they are always attributed to the different type of operator. One operator is the thermodynamic type that is steam usually flashes, this is the, the flow operated valves. Then the mechanical, they use the difference in the density between the steam and condensate to operate valve, a float operates the valve. And the last one is the thermostatic. This senses the temperature change of the condensate to operate the valve. So, when we talk about uh, the different type of uh, traps, the foremost is the thermostatic trap system. Now, here uh, this, this is again uh, different type of uh, traps like bellows balanced pressure, they are having the very high capacity like this. Then wafer diaphragm balanced pressure, slightly lower capacity. Now, here you see that uh, the wafer and the diaphragm. Uh, there are certain bimetallic type of uh, thermostatic traps, they are having high and low capacity. So, these are the bimetallic, we will discuss in due course of time. Now, see when we talk about uh, the simple bimetal element, there are two uh, metals having the different expansion aspects, they are infused together. Now, here you see that this is the high metal, the high expansion metal and here the other infused metal is the low expansion metal. metal. So, when any kind of uh, temperature change occurs, there may be slight deformation in in these uh, um, rods or in these uh, operators and by this way they can uh, reduce the flow or they can change or they can alter the uh, the flow and by this way the steam trap works uh, this uh, you can see this is more pictorial things here you see that uh, when this uh, metal deforms it usually close this valve so that it restricts the passage of uh, um, either steam or uh, water. So, uh, usually this valve is operated through this uh, bimetallic strip. Now, usually valve inside trap pressure holds the valve close, this valve toggles, back pressure can blow trap open opening and closing temperature wide apart and they must sub cool deeply to prevent the steam loss. So, all these are the essential parameters for this one. Um, you see that uh, there are certain bimetal disc which used to operate here you see that uh, these are the bimetal disc and they are attributed and uh, if a condition prevails they can either form deform to this way by this way they allow the passage of uh, um, steam or a water. So, usually pressure opposes uh, closing, they um, does not toggle, some thermodynamic action roughly follow, follows the steam saturation curve and uh, sometimes they act as a check valve when pressure is usually lost and they are very good for uh, superheated application. Now, another type of uh, um, the steam traps, they are disc and seat type of a system. Now, here you see that this is the disc which is usually seated over uh, here, this is the two seat, seats to seal and uh, this is the flat valve and seats required near perfect to the flatness of seal. So, this is the usual condition and if uh, any kind of uh, uh, deformation occurs, then the, the, the this may open and the water or steam whatever they can come out. Now, high velocity the flow of condensate to flash stream and dirt between the disc and uh, um, inner seat rings, sometimes it can uh, create a problem 
and uh, uh, this inner seat this one inner seat ring wears rapidly and disc surface erodes rapidly. There are certain mechanical traps here you see that uh, this is a float ball or float valve it is closely linked with the, the fixed pivot and uh, it is attributed to the valve and this is the air vent valve. So, if this particular I mean the level of water goes up in the, the in this steam trap then automatically this valve open to facilitate the drainage of condensate water and to facilitate the, the steam entrapment. There are some uh, thermostatic steam traps in which uh, the liquid expansion steam traps usually this is one of the most simplest form of thermostatic trap. Now, an oil filled uh, element this usually expands when heated to close the valve against the seat. Now, the adjustment this allows the temperature of the trap discharge to be altered say between 60 to 100 degrees Celsius which makes it ideally suited as a device to get rid of a large quantities of air and cold condensate at a startup. Here is here you see that this is the seat and it is fitted with this valve and this is the, the valve head and here this particular thing is filled with the oil and we may have uh, some adjustment nut through which we can adjust the desired parameters. So, if condensate usually ins, so the expansion or contraction may occur by this way it can regulate the, the, uh, the condensate recovery or condensate outlet within the steam system. This is the balance pressure steam trap here there are some weighted discs are there and if uh, uh, there is a, a change in density, so it may open or it may close just to facilitate the passage of uh, condensate. This is again uh, you see that uh, the labyrinth type of uh, steam trap, it is a very common and uh, uh, very useful. Here these, uh, these discs are attached in a graduating reducing manner and this is the crown wheel through which you can adjust the length of these uh, disc and by this way this not only uh, imparts the, the hindrance to the passage so that uh, any kind of steam may get condensed over the period of time and this can uh, allow the safe passage for the condensate out. Now, we discussed a lot of uh, uh, different type of steam traps. Uh, the question arises that uh, how we can go for a proper steam trap? This is uh, one of the fundamental question. So, while selecting the proper steam trap, there must be certain consideration and by definition a steam trap must trap or hold back steam while the same at the same time it should not restrict the passage of condensate, air or other incondensable gases like CO2, etc. It should overcome the problem of a water hammering, we will discuss this thing later on. Um, it should provide the proper drainage to the steam's main, it should provide the proper control, it should remove the dirt, it should uh, prevent the steam locking. So, all these things are quite essential for the steam trap. Let us talk about uh, strainers. The strainer material is selected to match the type of installation and the system pressure up to which it is expected to operate. We have discussed that what is the role of a strainer. Different type of filter screen size, these may be considered for different degree of protection. The reason for the strainer is that sometimes uh, during the passage of a steam, there may be certain debris, certain dirt dust may entrap within the steam line. The role of a strainer is to entrap all those dirt, dirt, debris, etc. Uh, to provide the, the finest purity of uh, steam with respect to the particles. So, the finer the filter, the more often it may need to cleaning. This is one of the major disadvantage. 
So one thing is certain that strainers are far easier and cheaper to buy and maintain the, the control valve or strain traps. These are some of the examples of the strainers, cut section of the strainer. Now here it is a more pictorial view, here the steam is coming inside and it is strikes to the plate that is the perforated plate and uh, because of uh, the striking some of the steam may get condensed so you can um, remove this steam and uh, the purest form or the purified form or stained form of steam is coming out. This is the inner um, anatomy of a stainer. This is a flow path you can see that this is the strainer so uh, any kind of a debris, dirt etc. it can be removed through here and steam may or steam or condensate may go out. Uh, this is again the cut section of uh, the strainer. Apart from this uh, in the accessories there are certain diffusers are being used in the steam line or steam traps. With the steam trap draining to atmosphere from open ended pipe, it is possible to see the discharge of uh, hot condensate. A certain amount of uh, flash steam uh, will also be present relative to the condensate pressure before the trap. Now this can present a hazard uh, to passerby, but the risk can be minimized by reducing the severity of the discharge. Uh, sometimes this may be achieved by fitting a simple diffuser to the end of the pipe which uh, reduces the ferocity of uh, discharge and sound and typically sound level can be reduced by up to say 80 percent. Now this is uh, uh, the typical diffuser. Now with the steam trap draining to the atmosphere from open ended pipe, it is possible to see the discharge of hot condensate. A certain amount of flash steam will also be present relative to the condensate pressure before the trap. Now this can be, um, this can present a hazard to the passerby, but the risk can be minimized by reducing the severity of the discharge. Now, See, we discussed a lot with the, the steam traps, then obviously because they are the integral part of the steam piping network or steam distribution network, then they, um, they require a continuous maintenance. So there are a couple of aspects attributed to the uh, maintenance in a steam trap. One is the routine maintenance. Now the routine maintenance depends on the type of the trap and its application. Like balanced pressure steam trap for example has an element which is designed for easy replacement. Changing these on a regular basis may be once every three year or so might seem wasteful in time and material. However, this practice reduces the need for trap change checking and should ensure a trouble free system with minimum losses through the defective traps. Apart from this, there are significant energy loss is attributed to these stream traps. Now to overcome these losses, there is a flash steam concept. This flash steam occurs whenever water at high pressure and a temperature higher than the saturation temperature of the low pressure liquid is allowed to drop to a lower pressure. Now here you see that uh, condensate at 5 bar and saturation temperature is say 159 degrees Celsius, it is relatively higher and this is uh, the steam trap. So flashing is occur and the condensate uh, and the flash steam at uh, 0 bar is coming out with the saturation temperature at 100 degrees Celsius. So flash steam, steam formed because this T1 is greater than T2. Another one important point uh, is uh, in the steam uh, generation unit that method of estimating the steam consumption. The optimum design for uh, a steam system will largely depends on whether the steam consumption rate has been accurately established. So this uh, will enable pipe size to be calculated while ancillaries like uh, control valve or steam traps can be sized to give best possible results. The steam demand of the plant, this can be determined using a number of different methods. One way is by calculation, 
by analyzing the heat output on an item of plant using heat transfer equation. It may be possible to obtain an estimate for the steam consumption. Another is the measurement. Steam consumption may be determined by the direct measurement using the flow metering equipments. This provides uh, relatively accurate data on the steam consumption for an existing plant. Another way is the thermal rating. The thermal rating or design rating sometimes referred as a design rating is often displayed on the uh, master plate or a name plate of an individual item of plant as provided by the manufacturer. So, sometimes it is reflected as a theoretical rating. See, uh, when we talk about the boiler and its accessories and a mounting, uh, another concept is usually coming to the picture is that is the centralization of boiler. Sometimes it is a very catchy or a buzzword. The reason is that if we are having the centralization of the boiler concept, then we may have uh, the facility to have one steam distribution network, but simultaneously it offers a variety of disadvantages related to the varying load. So, a well designed operated and maintained boiler house is the heart of an efficient steam plant. Now, it is important to remember that the steam boiler is a pressurized vessel, pressure vessel containing the scalding hot water and a steam at more than 100 degrees Celsius. Its design and operation usually are covered by number of complexities standards, regulations. Now, uh, when we are going for the centralization of the boiler, these is and uh, especially referring to the standards, the standards may vary based on the location. Like uh, we studied that uh, all countries, they are having their own individual standards like India uh, context, we are having Indian Boiler Regulation Act, etcetera. The variations uh, between the standards may seem small, but can sometimes be quite significant. Another thing in the boiler house is the overtime, that is the change of technology with reference to the safety. Sometimes uh, this is uh, you can say very uh, important and sometimes is a less important area. Change in technology is again a very debatable word, maybe the choice of fuel may be the choice of the fluctuation, may be the choice with respect to the safety. So, one must look into uh, this particular aspect. Another thing is uh, with respect to the environmental terms and these are attributed to the various environmental standards, emission standards, discharge temperature of the steam etcetera. And sometimes it is attributed to the local body and sometimes it is attributed to the central body. Some states uh, they do offer that uh, 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 various kinds of uh, uh, leverage with respect to the environmental norms and some are very strict. So, all these condition and even some, some countries they are very rigorous with respect to the emission standards and uh, usually it all depends on the choice of the fuel and the method of the firing. Now, another aspect that is with respect to the cost term, that is the fuel cost, alternative steam raising fuels, waste energy management. Now, when we talk about the fuel cost, then the so many things usually comes in our mind. One is that is related to the availability of the fuel, transportation cost, calorific value, all these are the contributing factor with respect to the cost aspect. Generally, when we are talking about the centralization of a boiler, when more than one boiler is required to meet the demand, it becomes economically viable to house the boiler plant in a centralized location. As installation and operating cost can be significantly lower than with the decentralized plant. Now, centralization offers various benefits over the use of dis, uh, dispersed smaller boiler, that is more choices of fuel and tariff, 
identical boilers are frequently used in the centralized boiler rooms reducing the in inventories cost, reducing the spare cost and other things. Heat recovery is uh, quite easy for to implement for the best return and also the reduction in the manual supervision. Now, economic sizing, uh, sizing of the boiler plant uh, to suit the diversification in demand. Sometimes uh, with the centralization of the boiler, exhaust emissions are easily monitored and controlled. You may have only one stake through which you can discharge the things. Similarly, the safety and efficiency these protocols are more easily monitored and controlled because it is uh, centrally located. Now, see when sometimes uh, the fuel for the boiler is a very debatable aspect because it uh, has a various parameters to be addressed. Usually, there are three most common type of fuels used. They are the coal, oil and gas. Industrial or commercial waste is also sometimes being used in certain boilers along with the electricity for electrode boilers. Let us briefly talk about the coal. There are different type of coals in um, practice, peat, lignite or brown coal, bituminous, semi-bituminous, anthracite. The bituminous and anthracite coals are used for the, the boiler uh, fuel. Now, when we are using these type of uh, fuels, there are several factors affecting the use of coal. One is uh, the availability and the cost because the mines are far away. So, sometimes there the transportation is attributed to the various factors like political reasons, sometimes the transportation lines and sometimes there are so many embargoes, etc. Then second thing is that the speed of response to the changing load because it is having some resistance time to combustion. So, these factors need to be addressed. Apart from this, discharges because we discussed about uh, the emission standards. So, discharges from the coal is again very important ash, one is ash. Now, this is to be removed usually involving the manual intervention and the reduction in the amount of steam available uh, while de-ashing takes place. So, this is uh, because you have to do in between. The ash must be disposed of which itself may be a very costly affair and various countries or states or different plants, they are suffering with the problem of the ash disposal. Emission, usually coal contains 1.5 percent of sulphur by weight, but this level may be high as 3 percent depending upon where the coal was mined. And trust me, this is this creates a huge problem with respect to the environmental aspect. Next fuel is oil. Uh, usually, it is graded based on uh, the requirement based on various refiners, etc. So, various grades are available, uh, being available uh, suitable for different type of a boilers rating. And these grades are like class D, diesel or gas oil, class E, light fuel oil, class F, medium fuel oil, class G, heavy fuel oils, etc. Now, when we are having the choice between the oil and coal, there are certain advantages associated with oil over coal. This includes the shorter response time between the demand and the required amount of steam being generated. Less energy has to be stored in the boiler water because of this shorter response time. Uh, the boiler could therefore be smaller radiating less heat to the environment with the consequent improvement in efficiency. Now, a smaller size uh, this also means that uh, the boiler occupied less production space. So, again uh, the indirect cost reduction. Oil contains only traces of ash and virtually eliminating the problem of ash handling and a disposal which is uh, a very burning problem. Uh, the difficulties encountered while receiving, storing and handling coal, usually it is being eliminated. Another choice is the gas. Now, gas is uh, the form of a boiler fuel that is easy to burn with a very little excess air. 
Now, fuel gases uh, they are available in two different forms. One is the natural gas containing the high proportion of methane, almost 85 to 90 percent, and LPG, the liquefied petroleum gas. Now, advantages uh, uh, of gas firing over oil firing because we discussed that oil is a bit superior to coal. Similarly, the gas firing is having uh, more advantage compared to the oil firing. This includes that the storage of fuel is not an issue. Gas usually piped right into the boiler house. Only traces of sulfur is present in natural gas, meaning that the amount of sulfuric acid in the flue gases is virtually minimal. Another choice of uh, uh, fuel is the waste, waste as a primary fuel. Now, there are two aspects. One is that waste material burned to produce heat which is used to, to generate the steam. The motives may include the safe and a proper disposal of hazardous material. Uh, one example is the hospital waste. Another is the waste heat, hot gases from a process like exothermic process in the chemical reaction. Another is the smelting furnace. This may be directed through a boiler with an objective for improvising the plant efficiency. So, we discussed about uh, the different type or choices of the fuel. Then uh, question arises that uh, what is what should be the phenomena through which we can select the appropriate fuel. So, the choice of fuel is again uh, very important. It will have a significant impact on the cost and the flexibility of the boiler plant. Now, factors that need a consideration, this includes the cost of fuel because ultimately if the cost of the fuel is on the higher side and then definitely your cost of the steam would be on the higher side. Cost of firing equipment, the cost of burners and associated equipment to suit the, the fuels selected and emission standard which must be observed. Then the security of supply, sometimes the, the disturbance may create the, the problem and thereby it may adversely impact to the operation of your boiler house. Fuel shortages, again this, this all depends on the supply. So, these, uh, these are the sub, some, some of the points uh, which we need to address. There are some other issues uh, which includes that how much fuel is need to be stored and where because you need to see, if, suppose if you are storing the oil, in that case you need to follow the, the safety norms and how much, how much time, how much uh, quantities you need to store that depends on the other aspect attributed to the plant. How to safely store the highly combustible material, gas and oil, they are especially at stake. How much it costs to maintain the temperature of heavy oil so that they are in a suitable viscosity of the temp equipment? Again, this is a very crucial aspect because sometimes because of the cost, because of the ease, uh, we used to store these oils. But uh, uh, during the use or during the use in the burner, it must have a, a proper temperature. So, how much it will cost to maintain that particular temperature? How to measure the fuel uses rate accurately? It is again a very difficult task because it depends on the various factor including the fuel uh, purity. There are certain type of impurities associated in the fuel, improper combustion, etc. Then how we can provide the allowances or various allowances for storage losses? Because during the storage, some, uh, uh, some sort of losses may occur, may be leakage, may be draining, etc. So, all these things are, are need to be addressed. Now, while considering the boiler design, the boiler manufacturer must aware about the fuel, what kind of fuel to be used when designing the boiler. This is because a different fuel produces a different type of a flame temperature and combustion characteristics. For example, oil produces luminous flame and a large proportion of the heat is transferred by the radiation within the furnace. Gas produces the transparent blue flame and a lower proportion of heat is transferred by the radiation within the furnace. 
So, in this particular uh, lecture, we discussed the various accessories attributed to the, the, the steam generation, especially the boilers. We discussed a lot with the steam traps, different type of steam traps, strainers, etcetera. Similarly, we discussed uh, about the centralization uh, of the boiler aspect, we discussed about the various choices of the fuel to the boiler. In case if you wish to um, uh, go for further study, we have enlisted couple of uh, references for your convenience. Thank you very much.